Hello, welcome everyone. Our special guest today is Avner Halperin, who's the CEO of Sheba Impact. Welcome, Avner. Thank you very much, Bruce. Great to be here. Great. So let's start out. Tell us a bit about Sheba Impact. Sheba Impact is the commercialization and innovation arm of Sheba Medical Center, part of what we call the ARC Global Innovation Network. You know, first of all, Sheba, as you know, is uh, the biggest hospital in Israel and in the Middle East. It's the top 10 best hospital in the world and actually the number one ranked hospital in the world outside uh, North America and Europe. And one of the reasons Sheba and the top 10 hospitals in the world is the fact that we are very, very focused on innovation. We are thinking innovation day and night. We do innovation in healthcare for two reasons. One, because we absolutely have to redesign how healthcare is done these days. Otherwise, we can't take care of the future generations doing what we're doing today, spiraling costs, aging population, etc. And the second reason, which is, I think, less familiar to most people, is that we've believed and now proven that health innovation is actually an economic growth engine for hospitals, but also for nations. And at, at Chiba, as part of our ARC network, we have actually built an ecosystem of over 120 startups that are based on our innovation platform that employ 3,500 people and are worth now $6 billion. And that, we believe, is just the beginning. Wow. And now we're replicating that in other locations around the world. And this is our way to impact healthcare and generate growth. That's terrific. So how did you come to this? Uh... So first of all, my background, personally, I am a physicist by background. Been involved in the tech ecosystem here in Israel for a few decades. About 21 years ago, I decided to join a couple of co-founders and build a startup around my daughter's asthma to develop a, a new sensor for early warning of asthma. Uh, we started that in 2004. And, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, very often you start with one thing and you end somewhere different. That's the life of an entrepreneur. So we started with a sensor at home for kids with asthma. We ended up selling a technology to Baxter for a, a sensor for adults or old people in hospitals with cardiac conditions. This uh, sensor and this technology was acquired by Baxter and is now in about 1,500 hospitals worldwide and about 10 million patients use it every year. After doing that, I went to Harvard and joined as a senior fellow at the Kennedy Center, working on how to do cross-border innovation and uh, health projects in the Middle East. Came back to Israel three years ago and joined Israel as CEO of the commercialization arm of Sheba. Tell us how this commercialization piece works. So first of all, we start by actually training clinicians to be innovative. We believe that the basis for innovation in the hospital is that actually every employee, we have 11,000 employees in Sheba, should think about innovation and think should come with ideas. So we do what we call our SPARK training for all clinicians and actually all employees are open. We can do that for three months on job training. We, so we generate a major funnel of innovation going in to our work. And then our team at ARC, and our, it, actually what it does, it takes the ideas that people bring to us. Sometimes we patent when relevant, but we work on project by project basis, find matching into real business needs. And we build an ecosystem of investors, an incubator, an accelerator, an angel club that actually fund these projects. By doing that, we have, I believe, broken a world record by building 20 new startups in a year in a hospital uh, this year. And we've, the last year, had actually two companies that were sold and are actually making already a big impact in the world in uh, cardiac and ophthalmology. So we, we're actually doing the whole process from uh, the ideation into actual company creation. And we also do the opposite. We say, look, if you want to come from the outside and join us, and if it's not our invention, come work out, uh, collaborate with us at Chiba. So we do what we call both open and organic innovation. Sure. And we see that the more we bring startups to run around our hospital, the more our clinicians become innovative. And the more our clinicians are innovative, the more startups want to come in. So we kind of create a virtuous cycle of innovation that has grown to this ecosystem of 120 companies worth over $6 billion, and most importantly, employing 3,500 people just by doing these processes of innovation. And maybe the last thing I'll mention is on this is that we are now expanding this globally. We're building what we call, based on our ARC innovation concept, a network of ARC sites all over the world that collaborate with us on innovation in other hospitals. And this way, you know, in innovation today, you have to do uh, innovation globally. You have to partner with sites in other locations. So other sites that want to work on innovation in our model work uh, with this, get some of our innovation into their hospitals, and hopefully in the future, we'll get their innovation into our hospitals as well. That's an amazing, it's an amazing story, amazing concepts, amazing numbers. 
please help us understand it a little bit better by giving us maybe one concrete example of a technology, how it was developed, how it was commercialized, and maybe even how it's being internationalized. Sure. You know, maybe I'll give a, a, a two quick examples. One yeah. is our, uh, one of our cardiologists, uh, Professor Udiba Anani, came th- up with an idea of how to make uh, what they call a replacement of a mitral valve on the valves in the heart without an open heart surgery. Around that, he created a comp- he uh, created a company called Innovalve. We found investors for it. We brought an external CEO. One of the interesting things we said is to this company work very quickly and, you know, time is of the essence in these innovations. We actually had this company based in our cardiac building. You know, we joke that, you know, when the CEO of this company was uh, interviewed, he said, look, the, the food at Chiba is not that great and the parking is challenging, but still I'm happy I'm in Chiba because the iterations of the innovation were very, very quick. Uh, so this company was acquired uh, last year by one of the most important companies in the world in structural heart called Edwards. And now they are uh, working on bringing that innovation to the world. So that's maybe one example. And another one, post-October 7th, one of the biggest challenges in Israel is post-trauma uh, and detecting post-trauma stress disorder. We co-developed with Microsoft, our partner, a chat GPT-based platform to actually do effective diagnostics of post-trauma um, without actually requiring the uh, psychiatrist uh, full, uh, I would say, intake. Instead of a psychiatrist spending an hour to two hours on intake, everything is done through AI and then uh, validated by a psychiatrist for just 10 minutes. Really if generating kind of almost a 10x acceleration by AI. This has already been extensively tested. There's now in actual, um, I would say, uh, regulatory processes. And interestingly, you know, people find that this uh, AI platform is as empathetic as uh, a real life uh, therapist in the intake process. And maybe even more, I would say, interesting for us is that we found that people often are willing to share some of their, I would say, ch- internal challenges more easily with AI than with a, with a real life person. For sure. For sure. That's amazing. So oh. those are some of the learnings we've had. Yeah. Now, let's say someone's um, a CEO or technology VP in, in a major medical center in the United States or Australia or United Arab Emirates. They hear about the amazing stuff you guys are doing. How do they go about partnering with you? And what would that partnership look like? Right. So first of all, we have partners in, uh, in many of the locations you mentioned, in Australia and uh, in North America and Europe. We had a partnership in Bahrain. Usually, first of all, you know, we get everyone, all our partners and potential partners together in what we call the ARC Summit once a year. We just had that earlier in September. So people come, see the innovation, and then talk to us about collaboration. We then, if they are interested, give them the option of getting kind of training on how we do our ARC innovation model. And then they become our partners, which means we share data, we share innovation, and we do co co-developments of uh, new projects. And we found that to be very, very effective. That's terrific. I'm so glad you ha- we had you with us here today. Abner, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Bruce.